Want to hear a conspiracy theory? Only. It's not a theory. It's a fact. Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. On March 20th, 1969, Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan, instructor of clinical pediatrics with the University of Pittsburgh, attended a meeting of his pediatric society with about 80 other physicians, uh, pediatric surgeons and radiologists at a local restaurant. The speaker was one of Dunnigan's old professors from the University of Pittsburgh, Dr. Richard L. Day, then professor of pediatrics at Mount Sinai School of Medicine, and he'd been a professor since 1935, and he had just finished his term as National Medical Director of Planned Parenthood. According to Dr. Dunnigan, Dr. Day was also an insider in something he called the Order. Dr. Day was careful in his introduction to say these words, You will forget most or much of what I'm going to tell you tonight. And he seemed to indicate that if it had gotten out that he spilled the beans in this relaxed atmosphere, he might not last very long. As a matter of fact, within months after these audio tapes got out, he did die. Dr. Day predicted a lot of stuff we can see today. Look, abortion becoming normal. This is before it was legal, 1969. Sex education down to the youngest kids. Encouraging homosexuality. Universal contraception. You know, sold right there in Walmart, in the bottom shelf. Not Walmart, you know what I mean. Limiting access to affordable health care. Bringing down American preeminence in industry. He went on and on. Remember, he spoke for two hours. But what perked my ears is something that's in the tape and in the transcript, but it's missing from some of the websites that talk about it. It's a throwaway to them. Listen to these words. Remember, Dr. Dunnigan was told he would forget, but he used memory devices to remember and quickly wrote down everything he could remember when he got home that night. This is very interesting. Dr. Day said, quote, The old religions will have to go especially Christianity. Then a new religion can be accepted for use all over the world. It will incorporate something from all of the old ones to make it more easy for people to accept and feel at home. Most people won't be too concerned with religion. They'll realize that they don't need it. In order to do this, the Bible will be changed. It will be rewritten to fit the new religion. Gradually, key words will be replaced with new words having various shades of meaning. Then, the meaning attached to the new word can be close to the old word, and as time goes on, other shades of meaning of that word can be emphasized, and then gradually that word replaced with another word. Done again explained. The idea is that everything in Scripture need not be rewritten, just key words replaced by other words. The variability in meaning attached to any word can be used as a tool to change the entire meaning of Scripture and therefore make it acceptable to this new religion. End quote. I couldn't have said it better myself. And this is a pediatrician. Dunnigan said, most people won't know the difference. And this was another one of the times where he, Dr. Day, said, the few who do notice the difference won't be enough to matter. And then Dr. Day said, the churches will help us. 1969. How did he know? One thing I can tell you, this guy knew somebody 
who had plans. Say you have a choice, or rather three. You can get a Bible that totally switches the Greek manuscripts and redefines words like the NIV and 40 others, or you can get a Bible that's like the King James, but the guts are torn out, key words are replaced with other words that are similar, but one, change the meaning, and two, are acceptable on the road to one world religion. Like the New King James, King James 2, King James 3, MEV, others. But I'm going to stay strong with God's preserved words in English, the King James Bible. I want God's words. Not a gutless wonder. God bless you and have a wonderful day.